Hello everyone and welcome to day two of our 30 day biology study challenge. I'm so excited you're here today and whether you're here for review, test prep, cram session, or you just want to learn some biology, I promise if you stick around it'll be worth your time. Today we're going to be covering water and different concepts related to how water is essential to life on earth. We're going to go over a few ideas and then answer some practice questions and along the way I'll try to provide you with some active studying strategies to really lock that knowledge into your brain. Let's get started. So water has some really unique properties that make it a really essential, important resource source to living things. It's often called the universal solvent because it can dissolve a really wide range of substances. And this makes it vital for the transport of nutrients, gases, waste molecules, and it makes it a great place for chemical reactions to occur within cells. In different organisms, 70 to 95% of their structures, of their body structures, is actually made up of water. And in humans, water's unique properties contributes to homeostasis and our survival as well. Water moves in and out of membranes through osmosis, moving from a high concentration of water to a lower concentration of water. We'll get more to transport mechanisms a little bit later on in our 30-day study challenge. In humans, water is a thermal regulator. It helps us regulate our temperature. It helps, obviously, transport materials. Our blood is composed of water. But plants, too, have plant sap, which is composed of water. It cycles through us. We eliminate extra water through our kidneys. And in our bodies, the liquid water is the most important, but it can also exist as water vapor and, of course, as solid ice. So let's talk about those properties. Water is a polar molecule, if you remember from day one which means it has an uneven distribution of charge. So one side is more negative and one side is more positive. The oxygen atom is more electronegative than the hydrogen atom, so it pulls electrons more towards itself, which gives that side a partial negative charge, and the hydrogens have then a partial positive charge. And because of this positive and negative side, this leads to hydrogen bonds, or this attraction that happens between water molecules. So remember, it is a solvent. It can dissolve a lot of different things, but because of its polarity, it can stick to itself really well, that's cohesion. It can stick to other substances, that's adhesion. It forms really strong attractions to itself. When there's a layer of water molecules on the surface, it's, it's more attracted to itself than the air above, so that contributes to surface tension. It also has a high specific heat capacity, which means it resists changes to temperature, which means it can absorb and store a lot of heat before its temperature rises, and that is crucial for temperature regulation in organisms and helps us maintain a stable internal environment. It also has a high heat of vaporization, which means it takes a lot of energy to convert from liquid to gas. And so in cooling processes, and there's liquid sweat on our skin, the evaporation decreases the temperature of our body by absorbing some heat during that liquid to gas phase change. So let's add a little bit more vocabulary for review. Again, polar, meaning water has a slightly positive and a slightly negative end. It'll work well with other polar molecules and nonpolar substances will tend to avoid water. So molecules that are water loving or that interact and are soluble in water are often called hydrophilic. And molecules that are water fearing, hydrophobic, are insoluble in water. So we think about the structure of our phospholipid bilayer in our cell membranes. Those hydrophilic phosphate heads are going to be more attracted to water and the hydrophobic tails are going to avoid water and so they'll situate themselves in the center of that membrane, which you can see right here. We'll get into membrane structure in another day of our study session, but I just wanted to flag this as a crucial and important quality of our cells and how water affects the structure of our cell membrane as well. Now, like I said, cohesion is the attraction of water molecules to each other. Adhesion, thinking you're adding an another substance. It's the attraction of water molecules to other types of molecules. So we can see how water beads with itself on surfaces. It touching those surfaces is adhesion, but that beading and droplet formation, that's cohesion because the water is connecting to itself. And even if you watch water fall down a window, you can see the droplets of water that gather together to form larger droplets. That's cohesion. Capillary action we often see in plants when we have cohesion and adhesion working together to up the stems and xylem against gravity. And of course, in surface tension, again, water's more attracted to itself than to the air or other things around it. That's why things float on top of lakes or certain bugs can crawl on top of water. This is due to surface tension. Now let's touch briefly on molarity. This is more of a chemistry concept, but we'll touch on it in laboratory settings in biology. Molarity, molarity is a measure of the concentration of solute, the thing that's being dissolved in a solution. It's expressed as number of moles of solute per liter of solution, no moles per liter. So usually we'll see it in the context of a lab when we have a particular solution. We'll see the molarity of a specific chemical or molecule in a biological sample. It's good to recognize that something with higher molarity has more has a higher concentration of particles within it, whatever that substance may be. So something that's 10 molar is 
probably going to be way stronger than something that's one molar or 0.1 molar. So a 10 molar solution would be strongest, one molar would be relatively intermediate in this situation, and 0.1 molar would be the weakest in this particular spectrum of molarity. Molarity can often be swapped with molar concentration, but you may often see this in the lab if you're asked to set up a solution or dilute something. And if you need to prepare a solution of a particular concentration, you would use molarity to calculate the amount of solute needed to achieve that concentration in a given volume amount. Okay, let's get into practice. Remember, practice questions are great for review. They're gonna help you lock that knowledge into your brain, whether they're easy or hard. That recall will help you reinforce information. And if they're challenging, hopefully it'll flag the concepts that you need to study further and help you remember that information better in the future. Let's go. Start with an easy one here. What type of connections are responsible for holding water molecules to other water molecules? A, hydrogen bonds, B, ionic bonds, C, covalent bonds, and D, peptide, peptide bonds. Take a second. If you want to pause this video and answer on your own, you can. If not, the answer is A, hydrogen bonds. Well, that's the only type of bond we talked about in this video, even though there are many other types of bonds that are important in biology. Hydrogen bonds are going to be the essential connection between water molecules that's going to contribute to many of its properties. Strider insects can walk on water and their diets consist of insects and larvae that live near the surface or on the surface of the water. Which of the following best explains how the properties of water support this insect's lifestyle? A. Water's high heat of vaporization allows strider insects to convert liquid water to gas. B. Water's capillary action helps the insects travel from place to place. C. Water's high surface tension enables strider insects to stay afloat. Or D. Water's low specific heat helps strider insects regulate their body temperature. Think about it. Three. Two, one, answer is C. Water's high surface tension enables strider insects to stay afloat. That one's pretty straightforward as well. But remember, many of the different properties of water contribute to survival of living things in lots of different areas. Colored water can adhere to a paper towel, which contributes to the absorption of the water by the paper towel. How is water able to be absorbed by the paper towel when it comes into contact with it? A. Water is polar and the fibers of the paper towel are nonpolar. B. Water is nonpolar and the fibers of the paper towel are polar. C. Water and the paper towel fibers are both nonpolar. Or D. Water and the paper towel fibers are both polar. Think about it. Correct answer is D. Water is polar and the paper towel fibers are both polar. Usually these are made of something like cellulose, which is polar as well. So water molecules can form hydrogen bonds with the paper towel fibers because they're both polar and then they're drawn into the towel and then water molecules can form hydrogen bonds with each other and the fibers together which helps absorb all of this water helps it be sucked up against the action of gravity capillary action and the colored water can rise up the paper towel Thanks so much for sticking with us on day two of our 30 day biology study challenge. Tomorrow, day three is biomolecules. I look forward to seeing you then. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. Give this video a like if it's been helpful and I'll see you later.